Hey everybody, welcome back to Makers Gonna Learn. My name is Alicia and I'm a craft producer here with Makers Gonna Learn and today I'm going to show you all how to create this super cute teacher gift. If you like this project, make sure you like the video and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future crafts. Okay, for the supplies you're going to need for this project, we are going to need this little backer paper. We actually attached the file um, in the description, so you're not going to have to make this. This will be ready for you to print. So you're going to need a printer as well. Um, any basic printer will do. That's just on regular cardstock paper. Um, we're going to be putting this together in design space. We're using two of the makers going to learn fonts for this and I'll show you guys how to do this so you can kind of customize what words you're going to be using. You're going to need a burnishing tool, a weeding tool, probably need some scissors. We're going to be using black vinyl for this project. This is permanent matte black vinyl, standard grip Cricut mat. And then we've got multiple different colors of card stock. So this is for our pencil. We've got the eraser color. This is the metal part above the eraser. This is the wood on the pencil. And then this will be the tip of our pencil. So this is the color palette we're going to be working with today. Very cute. And then you're also going to need a shadow box. Now you can get this any size that you want. We're doing an 8x10. Um, I wouldn't go much smaller with the paper flowers just because you can't really, it's harder to make the paper flowers um, the smaller they are. This really shows the flowers and you'll be able to see the words really well. So I would go 8x10 or bigger for this project. And then obviously some transfer tape for our decal. And then we're also going to be using our Lynn Lily hot glue gun. If you guys are regulars here, you know we use this hot glue gun all of the time. The most important tool you're going to need to use for this project is a quilling tool. This is Bazil, the brand, um, but we have actually plugged what you're going to need in the description below. So you cannot complete this project without this. This is what's going to make our paper flowers. Okay, now that you guys know what supplies you're going to need, we're going to go ahead and hop into design space and we are going to upload our image. Now, if you don't already have it downloaded, you're going to want to go to our website, which is makersgonnalearn.com and we are going to go to cut files. We have multiple different flower files that you can use, um, but we're going to be using the rolled flower number one. So I'm just going to search flower. And then once that loads, we will find the one we're looking for. There's a lot of different options here, which is pretty cool to see everything that we offer on the website. You can see right here, there's rolled flower 12 and then there's rolled flower one. And if you go to the next couple pages, there's tons more of these rolled flowers, but we're just going to download this one and we're going to open it up and make sure that it's unzipped and it is right here. We're going to be using the SVG. So I'm just going to hop back on over to design space. I'm going to click browse and then it should be right in our downloads. There it is. And then we're going to go ahead and click upload and then you'll add it to your canvas right down here on the bottom right. So when it comes into design space, it's going to be a little bit bigger than we need it for this specific project. You may have to do a couple of test cuts before you actually decide what size you want your flowers to be, but we're making an eight by 10 flower box and I need my flowers to be about between four and five inches. So 5.7 is a little bit big. I'm just going to do these at four and a half. So it's right in the middle. And if, if you plug four and a half in here, this will automatically adjust. So we're going to make these four and a half and this should automatically adjust on this one. And then you can duplicate this depending on how big your cardstock is. You may be able to fit more than two or three flowers. Um, I think with this size, you could probably only do three, maybe four on a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. But we're just going to use three right here. And I like to cut my colors out um, independently. So basically, what I did was kind of measure out 
on my um, shadow box. So what I did was measure out on my shadow box about how big I was going to want my pencil. And you can actually take this backer out if it makes you feel better to see. You can take this little backer out. And I actually made a couple test flowers to start. So the first one I made was a little bit smaller and I decided to use that for the head of my pencil. But for the rest of it, I wanted them to be the same size. And this was about how big I wanted. So this is a four and a half inch flower rolled up. And um, you can kind of, I didn't cut all the flowers. These are just my testers but I just wanted to see like how big. So I think this one was a little bit over five inches. So you can see, I could wind it up a little bit more and make it a little bit tighter of a flower. And if you've made paper flowers before, you know you can kind of adjust it that way. Um, but just stick with the four and a half. If you're doing an eight by 10 project, then that should work perfectly for you. So back into design space, we're gonna go ahead and click make it. And we will select on mat. And then we're going to put our cardstock onto our Cricut mat. So I'm going to be using a standard grip Cricut mat today. So you're going to want to place your cardstock at the top left corner, and then you can burnish it down. That way it stays on really good and make sure your mat is sticky enough, but not too sticky since we're using paper. So standard grip is like a good go-to for this. And then we are going to go ahead and slide this into our Cricut. So once you're here, we're going to be cutting on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here and select eight and a half inches by 11. And since our flowers are a little bit bigger, it's going to put it on to two sheets of paper and that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and select continue and we will select our Cricut device, which is a maker three today. And then once that loads, we, will select browse all materials and we're using 65 pound cardstock which is considered a light cardstock and we're going to select this setting and hit done and then we're going to go over to our Cricut and we're going to go ahead and slide that in. So once your flowers are cut what you're going to want to do is flip your mat over and we're going to peel this paper off very gently. You don't want to just pull it up. We just want to kind of peel it off of the Cricut mat. That way we don't accidentally tear anything. So just take your time. And then you can see it doesn't look like a flower yet, but you get these fun little spirally things. So these are going to be our flowers. We'll go ahead and pull this one out as well. Just be super careful because they're very delicate. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one. And while that's cutting, I'll show you all how to roll your flowers. So I've cut all of the flowers the same exact size, which is four and a half. But for the tip of the pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that a little bit smaller. I think we're gonna go about, let's do four inches, um, just to make it like more of a fine point. And the rest of them, you can go ahead and cut those out and then just resize one flower to a little bit smaller than four and a half and you should be good to go. So for the black flower, you're gonna need one three inch flower. For the beige, you're going to need two four and a half inch flowers. For the yellow, you're gonna need nine four and a half inch flowers. For the pink, you're gonna need three four and a half inch flowers. And for the gray, you're gonna need three four and a half inch flowers. So what I'm gonna do now is show you all how to actually roll your flowers. So you're gonna need your quilling tool. This is Bazil. Um, we actually have this link below for you. There's two ends. We're gonna be using this end. So this is like a dull tip, but there's actually a tiny, tiny little sliver cut out right through the middle of this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the end of your flower and you're gonna slide it right in there. So you can kind of see how that's in there. It's just holding it. And then I like to keep my thumb and my pointer finger on both sides at all times. Just kind of get it started. And then you're just gonna hold that on there and you're gonna take your other hand 
and you're going to spin, spin, spin. And it's, you're going to be more comfortable depending on which hand you're more dominant with. Um, I use both hands, so I can do it either way, but I feel better twisting with my right hand and holding with my left. And then you're going to pop this off so it looks like a tiny little rosette. And you'll have a little tail right here. So at the middle of each flower, there's a little dot. That's going to be where we're attaching the flower to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of let this flower go. Don't be scared to let it go. It's just going to kind of, it'll stay rolled up, but it'll come apart a little bit. And then you can spread it out as much as you want. I wouldn't make it too, too big. Um, like I feel like that's a good size for us for this project. And then I'm going to take our Lin Lily hot glue gun. I'm going to put a dot right there. And then I'm just going to attach the rest of the flower onto that dot of glue. So let me grab my hot glue gun and just put one little dot there. And then you're going to attach the whole flower to that dot. And just like that, you've got your first little paper flower. So cute, right? So we'll go ahead and set that to the side. And I'm going to make all of these flowers and you guys can kind of watch it um, in a really quick time lapse. So here's the finished product for the paper flowers at least. How cute is this? Now we basically just have to go in and attach these to our backer. But before that, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually attach the printed off um, kindergarten paper onto the back of our shadow box. So this is the file that we used. Um, it's down below in the description. You can just print this, just click the link print it out. Um, I printed it on eight and a half by 11 and I had to trim it up a little bit. And then this is our eight by 10 backer from our shadow box. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put glue in all the corners and then we're just going to stick this right on. And you've got to be a little bit quick with your hot glue gun because it will dry if you take too long. I love, love this paper pattern. This is so nostalgic. If you guys use this, leave a comment down below if you use this when you were in grade school. I love it. And then we're just gonna, we'll keep it this way. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our flowers. I'm gonna place my flowers before I actually glue them down. That way I know they're exactly where I want them to be. So I'm just gonna start from the top and work my way down. If you really wanted to, you could measure across the top and get the exact center. Um, or if you're like me, you can eyeball it. I'm going to scoot it over just a hair. Okay, and so you can put them in like as snug as you want. I want them to be pretty tightly together. And then I'm just going to go one by one and I'm going to take our hot glue gun and put just a dot of glue right on the bottom there. And then I'm going to attach them all the way down. So once you have your flowers glued down, um, you can actually like, there's no right or wrong way to direct your pencil. So, you could have done it like at an angle. You can do it pointing down if you prefer that. It's totally your discretion. Um, but our file that we did is actually this way. So we're gonna be putting this, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this in design space. We're gonna be putting this on the outside of the shadow box over top of this. So we're gonna have it at this angle and we're gonna go ahead and hop over to design space and I'll show you guys how to lay this out. All right, so once you're in Design Space, we're going to come over here to the Text option, 
and I'm going to go ahead and type out the first word. And what I'm going to do, I use two different fonts for this design. So the first one that I use is a typewriter font and it's called Click Clack. This is one of our uh, Makers Gonna Learn member fonts. Super, super cute. I love this font. I love using a typewriter font for a little bit more of a whimsy look. And then you can duplicate that. And I'm going to type in influence. So the whole thing is the influence of a good teacher can never be erased. So I'm going to change this to our script font, which is farewell. And that's also a member font on Maker's going to learn. This is a really fun, like almost a brush stroke type of font file. And those are the two fonts we're going to be using. So you can come over here to shapes and what I'm going to do is make a square the exact size of our shadow box where this is actually going to be going. So it's an eight by 10, unlock the square, and then you're going to change the size to eight by 10. And then we're going to go up here to the top and we're going to select white. And then we're going to go to arrange and we're going to send this to the back. So now we know how much space that we're working with. This is how big the shadow box is. And then we can kind of resize our fonts accordingly. Um, so I'm going to shrink this down a little bit and then we'll just work our way down. So the influence, and then we're going to do of a, and this typewriter font, and you can play around with the placement if you want. Um, I'm going to duplicate that. I like to put the important words in script. That's kind of how I decide what I want to be script and what I don't want to be script, but there's really no right or wrong, wrong way. It's more of a design, design decision. And I'm going to shrink that. I also want my script words to be like a little bit bigger. Um, they don't have to be like huge or anything, um, but I do like them to be slightly bigger. So the influence of a good teacher, we're definitely going to have teacher in big script and I'm going to pull this all the way across because that is the most important part. And then we're going to do can never and we're just duplicating our text can never be and we'll shrink it down just a little bit and then we're going to do erase in our script font. So this is just a good way for you all to kind of lay out, use our fonts and lay them out in a pretty way. And it's totally custom. You've made this entirely on your own, which I really love. And you can kind of play around with the how, where it's laid out. And it's a little bit big. I don't want it so close to the edges. We want to have a little bit of negative space around it. So what I'm going to do is select all. I'm just going to hold the shift key down and click each one. Fun little hack. And then you can come down here on the bottom right and just shrink it up as small as you want. So it's going to kind of be like that. I'm going to turn our rectangle horizontally so you can see this is what it's going to look like. And then our pencil will actually be behind it. So we're going to apply this to the front of the glass. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that to its side and then I want to add in a little bit something extra. So I'm going to upload one of our files off of the Makers Gonna Learn website and this file is just three little hearts. This is linked below if you do want to use it. We're going to be using the SVG and I'm going to upload that and then we're going to add it to our canvas. And what I'm going to do with these hearts is break them apart and resize them. So you can come up here to ungroup and now they're individual little hearts and you can kind of place them around wherever you would like. I just want to use them so it kind of evens the entire design out. I think they add a nice cute little touch. You could put two here. You could put another one up here if you wanted. You can rotate them. So after you add your hearts in, we're going to delete this rectangle because we don't really need that anymore. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change these to, I'm actually going to change all of this to black. 
because we're cutting it all out of black anyways. After everything is black, we're going to select it all and we are going to attach it. And then once we come into the make it area, we're going to select on map and everything is going to be together right here. It's hard to see because I've changed the color to black, but we're just, it's already there. And then we're going to select continue and I'm going to apply my matte black vinyl to my Cricut mat and then send it through the Cricut. So once you get into all materials, we're going to select premium. We're going to search premium and we're going to select removable mat and then we'll select done. And then we're going to go ahead and send it into the Cricut. So once it's cut, you're going to weed out the black vinyl and then just leaving the words and you'll apply your transfer tape and we're going to go ahead and peel off the backer. Just be super careful when you're peeling this off that none of the letters start coming up with the backer. There's lots of tiny pieces when you're using a bunch of words like this. So you just want to be super mindful of the entire design. Being very careful as you pull it off. And then once it's completely off, we're going to go ahead and apply it to our shadow box. And I'm just going to burnish that down. And then you're just going to very carefully peel your transfer tape off. We want to make sure all of our letters are sticking to the glass of the shadow box. And then after this, we will plug in our paper flower pencil and the project will be complete. So there's the words. And then we're just going to take our pencil and I'm going to actually flip it over so we can have a big reveal. So flip it over. We're just going to plug this right in. You got to watch your prongs on your shadow box. Okay. And then just put those down and there you have it. That is the completed project. What do you guys think? If you decide to do this project, make sure you share it with us. Uh, leave a comment below if you plan on doing this. We would love to see um, what you guys come up with. What did you guys think of this project? I love how it turned out. Super cute, super easy to make. This would be such a perfect gift for any teacher in your life. If you enjoyed this project, make sure to like the video and subscribe so you never miss any of our fun upcoming projects. Thank you guys for being here with me today and I will see you next time. Bye.